Hi everyone and welcome. In this recording, I'm going to be speaking about the shift of the nodes of the moon, the nodal axis, where on the 17th or 18th of January, the nodes of the moon leave the Gemini and Sagittarius axis and retrograde into Taurus and Scorpio. The nodes of the moon always go retrograde, so in case you were wondering why I'm using that term. And this is usually a very big energy for absolutely everyone individually and collectively alike because this sets the theme for the next 18 months of our lives, the karmic theme. Some astrologers call this even basically the destiny axis because even if, you know, a nodal shift may not really impact certain people's life that much, well, it still guides them in a very distant way. But of course, this is where not everyone needs to accomplish very, very big things in their area of lives where this nodal axis falls into. However, if it's a nodal return or an opposite nodal return, now a nodal return means when the south node and the north node get into the same position as it was at the moment when we were born, or the opposite, where the south node meets our natal north node and vice versa. Now, this is very impactful, especially from an individual and personal perspective, because that is usually the time when big things, big changes, accomplishments, crisis, you know, massive life-changing events take place in someone's life. And at the same time, the North Node. That is also when we get to choose our path, but in a way in which a lot of things feel very fated. Now, before I mention what exactly we can expect in the next 18 months to be playing out, the nodes of the moon are not planets. They are basically fictionary points in astrology. Without going into the technical detail, basically it shows us the karmic path and the energy of the karma, the signs where they are in, and of course if there is any big aspect that they hold. And when I say big aspect, I don't usually mean the personal planets because those last for a very short period of time. This is more like when they hold conversations with the very slow-moving planets, the outer planets. And just to give a very quick example, if I'm not mistaken, at the very beginning of last year, so 2021, The nodes of the moon squared Neptune in the sign of Pisces because the nodes were in mutable signs with Gemini Sagittarius axis. So that represents a square, a T-square to be precise. And, you know, that was a very, very wishy-washy, deeply emotional energy where we really, really, really needed to soul search because the north node in Gemini we had an intellectual mental empowerment. So perhaps we received a lot of information, but we needed to filter it deeply. And Gemini, the dual sign, the twins, we also needed to find balance between the mental sphere and our emotional world. And that's Neptune. And for very many people, it wasn't just simply emotional it was also a very, very powerful spiritual energy because on one hand, Gemini can represent the mind and the sphere of the intellect, but Sagittarius and the South Node in Sagittarius is all about the higher knowledge, if that makes sense, as in faith or our personal perspectives, our worldview, our ways of interpreting reality and, you know, the opposition of the South Node and the North Node. However, we interpret reality that influences and determines our way of thinking. And the square with Neptune, we had to deeply, deeply, not just soul search, but allow me to use a symbolism, Neptune and Pisces water. 
And Neptune sometimes can mean illusion, but at the same time, it was in the third deacon of the sign of Pisces, which is a scorpionic deacon, toxicity, pollutant. So memories, everything to do with the past, traumas, very strong psychological energy, but, you know, usually in a hindering way, so on clean water, and we had to decant it. First of all, it stirred it up. It was like a big emotional and spiritual and even psychological mess within us. But it took some time for that to decant, to separate the clean water from the pollutant. And only then could we remove the pollutant. Symbolically speaking, that is how we discerned illusion from non-illusion. And even this is highly subjective because isn't everything in life an illusion? But... Neptune and Pisces, the inner truth that counts the most. And the inner truth depends on us, on our worldview, and ultimately what it is that we want to believe, what it is that we want to resonate with. So it's not just something automatic. We also had a really, really strong choice to make here. Thus, the eclipses in the sign of Gemini. We really needed to choose who it is that we want to be. But in order to do that, we have to be aware who it is that we are conditioned to be. But now this energy is ending. It is almost over because, as I said, on the 17th or 18th of January 2022, the nodes of the moon enter or retrograde back into Taurus and Scorpio axis. And this changes the energy. This changes the energy profoundly. Gemini was a highly intellectual, mental energy. Taurus is totally different. Taurus is down-to-earth practical energy. It has so much to do with nature, the natural way, the basics. It is also all about values, value systems in any way, shape and form, in any expression, including purely psychological, including that which is also in our collective consciousness, not just individual. So the collective psychology, if that even makes sense, also plays a massive role value-wise. What it is that we find valuable, what it is that we do not. How are our value systems changing and upgrading? And this def- definitely represents a purge as well, because the North Node in Taurus is returning to the basics and then building up from there. Now, since we are speaking about Taurus and the North Node, let's remain on this subject and let's see what are the main themes that we can expect to play out in the next 18 months. And this nodal return is a little bit unusual, so to say, because the North Node is not alone in the sign of Taurus. It has Uranus there staying in Taurus much longer than the North Node. So this is a highly Uranian energy. This is for the future. This is breaking down Everything, the old, the outdated, the traditional, and at the same time, returning to the basics, returning to a certain state which cannot be broken down anymore, as in perfectly natural. Because, you know, there is only so much that you can do to break something down. Like, the best symbolism is in physics or chemistry, where... You cannot split the atom to infinity. There is a certain limit. When you find the most basic component, well, that's it. Even if you can, and chances are, of course, you can split it to the infinity, but it will get absurd. And Uranus, as revolutionary, as quantum as it is, well, it still serves something very, very practical. It is... Also, a pretty down-to-earth energy, as quantum as it is, it still represents the truth, the objective truth. So, what I'm trying to say here is nature is the limit. 
And speaking about nature, one of the tendencies that there is when the North Node is in the sign of Taurus, agriculture, returning into nature, quite physically, because Taurus is physical Earth. We will expect a lot of people having this soul level calling to quit like a city life, get away from the concrete prison, and this definitely includes routines as well. This is cutting down routines to their basics. For example, certain enjoyment that we used to have in our lives, like going out, meeting friends, something that we used to do for sheer enjoyment, and it might have to do with modern life as well. In this next 18 months, we might have this urge, this powerful soul calling to strip ourselves, even routine-wise, from all the illusions, from all the distractions, from everything that is a bit too much pleasure, too much enjoyment. This energy calls for, for a raw honesty, almost a brutal honesty, where we ask ourselves, does this, whatever we are doing, a, a routine, a tradition that we made our own, is this really serving me or should I change? Maybe not necessarily abandon it, but the limits, change the limitations, the Saturn and Uranus square, of course. Change the measure, upgrade my value system. Sometimes less is more in the sense that the North Node in Taurus just strips off being oversatisfied because when we just get satisfaction in a limitless quantity, let's say, it just kills the pleasure. So this will be the tendency. If we want to feel genuine pleasure, we need to know the limits. And Taurus is all about physical pleasure, the five senses, smell, taste, touch, and basically everything, even that which is merely a psychological expression of pleasure. We want to feel that deeply and very, very authentically. And nature is definitely one of them. Going into nature spending time in nature, working physically with nature, connecting to nature. So basically everything to do with nature will be a massive, massive theme. And as I say, with this energy, a lot of people are just going to feel a soul calling to do something natural. This also favors agriculture, going back to the way our ancestors used to, you know, harvest and cultivate the land, and basically their agricultural um, distinctiveness to basically their cultures, their region, that which also the, the physical earth that they walk on permits, because every soil is different, every region has a different climate, etc., etc. And that is also very Taurian, because Taurus is very, very traditional, but this is the basic, so how it always used to be in a traditional, balanced and harmonious way. But at the same time, this also leads to a duality because Uranus in the sign of Taurus revolutionizes. That means new technology. That means a much, much greater influence in the cycles and works of Mother Nature than we as a species ever had in our existence. And I do believe, you know, the South Node in Scorpio, this will also raise a lot of issues about the morality of all of it. Some people will be very, very much against interfering in nature's way with genetics and, you know, ultra-modern technology, while other people will definitely support it. And let me just give you an example that I myself heard from someone who is working in this industry, in this domain, synthetic meat, for example. You know, that might be a little bit different, also revolutionary, but the morality of it. And this is also Uranian energy, the dichotomy. It's wrong, but it's so moral. The biggest good that it can actually 
um, conjure up is saving the lives of animals and, you know, anything related to that. But then other people might argue, Scorpio again, but aren't we supposed to be predators? We are also part of nature, so we need to be part of natural selection. We do need to, let's say, kill. Yet then another Uranian argument. We do have the technology as, right now as we speak not to do this if we don't necessarily want to and be totally okay with it and nature will keep herself in harmony even if we as a species withdraw ourselves as predators from it. But, you know, this is what tradition and the natural living means to everyone. For some people, going predatory is perfectly natural, and that is also Taurus. Now, for other people, it is more like the Uranian kind of expression of Taurus, which is a very uncomfortable energy. Well, let's respect nature, but not be part in the bad or immoral part of it. In the sense that let's not allow nature, mother nature, to include us in the cruelty of her ways that sometimes is needed and definitely naturally. But, you know, this is a perfect example of the scorpionic energy. Searching deep inside of ourselves and seeing what exactly is the deepest truth that we resonate with Because this topic, maybe, is a little bit too much for a very rational and down-to-earth approach. It is just a question of morality or perhaps philosophy. And the seeds, the very core and the roots of these philosophies, while they lie in the domain of Scorpio, because that is where we need to purify it, alchemize it, so to speak, first before it enters into the domain of Sagittarius, that which we truly believe in. It has to make sense to our souls, even to our unconscious, before we can believe in something. Now, another big theme with the North Node in the sign of Taurus, real estate. Everyone wants property. Everyone wants to have a physical place to live in. But again, Uranus in the sign of Taurus destabilizes everything. Because usually this North Node in Taurus is very helpful. You have a purpose based on your true values. And Taurus seeks permanence. So, of course, everyone wants a little piece either of land or a home, a house, a flat. Or anything that has to do with property, owning a piece of basically the world physically. So this energy can be very, very helpful. You find the means because the North Node is the path forward in life. So whenever there is a very, very strong will and a karmic energy, well, the universe helps us one way or another and we get there. But with Uranus, the price values, Taurus is the home of Venus. So that represents physical value may really, really turn chaotic. You know, for some people, it can be like a truly miraculous luck when they can buy a property almost for nothing out of sheer coincidence or twist of fate. Uranus, of course. Or this is where another man's trash is another man's treasure. Or Uranus can also represent loss for some people. The North Node conjunct Uranus later on, of course, much later on, can represent some people losing absolutely everything. And why? Opposition to South Node and Scorpio, debt. They just simply cannot pay back the debt or inheritance or losing something. But that means another man gains it. Maybe very, very incredibly, ridiculously cheap. But with Uranus, this can work the other way around, of course. Where for some people, even if they have the money, even if they have everything that they need, it just doesn't come together or it comes together with infinite effort. Another expression of this North Node in the sign of Taurus, Earth changes, especially with Uranus in the picture. Even without the North Node, Uranus in the sign of Taurus is earthquake 
That is where tectonic plates shift and the physical earth rearranges. So we can expect a lot of earth events, landslides, earthquakes, volcanic activities, even that basically piece of earth which is under the ocean. So this can also lead to tsunamis and big events related to water. Needless to say that Jupiter is meeting Neptune in April, 14th or 13th of April. So that will definitely represent a massive flood or something massive that happens in the ocean or the sea somewhere. Another way this energy can play out is that new currency rises and very, very quickly and spontaneously, and when I say spontaneously, in a way that really, really doesn't match any predictions, especially the predictions of those specialists who actually created a system that functions very, very well, and it usually is almost spot on to predict what happens financially, economically, stock, and all all of that stuff. But this is where Uranus really, really adds a twist. And it's just unexpected. It is just unpredictable. So no one knows what happens. But the karmic purpose is to revolutionize. So the new is rising up without a shadow of a doubt. May this represent something to do with banking, May, because Scorpio is also linked to that. May this represent cryptocurrencies. May this represent where cashless societies are made permanent now. The first stages when that becomes part of our normality, of our every ba- everyday lives. And ultimately, because of the presence of Uranus, And the presence of Uranus is so important here. That's why I'm saying that this is not an average and typical uh, north node in the sign of Taurus. This is one which quantum leaps us into the future, like it or not, ready or not. So a lot of new, never ever seen, or better said, never applicable before, tendencies that will turn into custom, into tradition, into normality will be born, especially financially and with values. And when it comes to values, it can be so very many things, including things that are also related to Taurus. New beauty standards, for example, what it is that we find physically beautiful. It can also represent a certain kind of fashion. But when I say fashion, it's not the Aquarian type. It is not really the Gemini kind of energy. But rather the immortal fashion. That which works in any trend, any period of time. It is basically something which becomes immortal from an artistic perspective. Taurus is also linked to the throat, the voice. So music, the music industry will experience upgrades. And Uranus, the unexpected. A lot of new talents are going to be born this year. But those people are going to be so, so, so talented that they will leave us totally speechless. And chances are this part is around April as well. Because Jupiter and Neptune together with Venus as well around that time, it is an extremely powerful artistic energy. But this is where it's like the epitome of what artistic really means. Venus is exactly at 27 degrees in exaltation in the sign of Pisces. That is limitless beauty of the soul of romance of, you know, the misty, mysterious, boundless Piscean energy. So that is like the cherry on the cake. We haven't seen this kind of artistic expression in 166 or so years when Jupiter last met Neptune in this part of the sky. And naturally, those people who will rise up around this time as artists, singers 
or whatever, but usually singers because Taurus is the energy of the beauty of the song, the harmony of the sound, and Mother Nature <laughs> created the harmony of the song, so to speak, before humans even walked on the earth. Songbirds are one of the most beautiful and truly inspirational example for this. So after all, Mother Nature is the greatest artist and I'm not sure that we can ever or should we even want to outdo her. And of course, we can also ignore that Taurus is the second house. So this will definitely affect our own personal economy, money and what we do with our money, investments, how we spend our money. For a lot of people, this North Node in Taurus will mean, well, this is the moment, this is the year and actually the next 18 months where you really get your stuff together and just sort out your financial situation, whatever that means to you, so that it is at least acceptably stable for the long-term future. This definitely also can include physical health, everything that has to do with the physical body. This can also mean fertility for a lot of ladies out there. When the time has come for motherhood or to consider having children. Of course, for other people, this may just represent having a pet. But when the North Node is in Taurus, usually the home of Venus again, Females have this maternal instinct activation where they might just want to become moms. It, and with Uranus, for some ladies out there, this will come as an unexpected event or with an unexpected person or, you know, Uranus is full of surprises. So we'll see what happens later on. Now, from a collective perspective, second house is still second house. So it will stir up the world economy. Uranus will revolutionize. And it's also unpredictable. So let's wait and see how the world economy, the financial systems, banks, world bank, everything that has to do with basically money will look like in the next 18 months. But of course, this is where another power player, Pluto in the sign of Capricorn, and even Neptune himself and the sign of Pisces can tell us certain hints of what happens. Well, Pluto is the god of money and wealth, financial power as well. It holds a long lasting square with planetoid Eris. Eris, which is an even more potent astrological energy than Pluto himself. So this means the end, the crumbling of old traditions and structures. And this is where Uranus comes into play. When something ends and crumbles, another thing has to take its place. And Pluto in the sign of Capricorn represents fossil fuel. Neptune in Pisces represents oil. So that can represent a skyrocketing of this. But that skyrocket will change the world. Will It will change laws and regulations, the repartition of resources. So it can be pretty chaotic. And perhaps one of the most positive and optimistic and hopeful expressions is maybe this is when we consider and at least try to implement something like universal income because Uranus is the planet of equality. It is the rebel who fights for equality, equity, humanitarianism, and sometimes in a very, very brutal way, it wants that. So I'm not saying that we're going to have this in the next 18 months, but I'm saying that an important step towards that is definitely going to be made, even if it's purely ideologically, or even if it's trying to create a system putting down the blueprints. And now let's get to the south node in Scorpio, where that is also a powerful financial energy. And Scorpio rules 
you know, resources that we share with others. It also rules debt. It can also rule the money, income, or any kind of value before it is in your pocket, if you know what I mean, or before it turns into your own personal possession. Credit, loans, mortgage, anything like that is a primary example. It's yours, but is it yours? So with South Node and Scorpio, a lot of people will have to manage their debts. This is absolutely perfectly true for countries and for the whole human collective. Debts will get out of hand, but that is not necessarily a bad thing because it is just the karmic period when the clock is ringing that it's time to settle it. It's time to manage it. It's time to either eliminate it or do something with it in such a way that it doesn't become stress, burden. It doesn't become a massive source of unhappiness. Scorpio can represent a toxin. Scorpio also rules secrets, especially those secrets which are really, really kept hidden on purpose and even guarded and protected. And usually South Node in Scorpio represents elimination. So that means revelation, secrets coming out. It can also represent when those people who committed Scorpio, Scorpionic acts in the sense of the lower Scorpio energy crimes, any kind of dishonesty, manipulation, getting what you want through unorthodox means and it's time for reckoning in that sense and the ruling planet of Scorpio is in Capricorn almost in an erratic position it is also the Pluto return of the United States so we can already see how things are linked together and how certain secrets coming out exposures or the result of investigations financial crimes or Crimes of sexual nature. Scorpio also rules laboratories. That which was created in a laboratory and kept hidden. This is just a very, very small example. Or to add to this, when the time when the coronavirus broke out in China, we had a Mars in Scorpio and Uranus in Taurus opposition. The South Node will activate that energy so something, a secret, a greater truth or that which was hidden or a result of an investigation will come out and there will be consequences. Scorpio also rules diseases and mutation. This can represent a further mutation of either the coronavirus or another pandemic, unfortunately, and let's hope that's not the case. But, you know... For example, in 85, when we had the, north, the nodes of the moon also in Taurus and Scorpio axis, there was a huge spike of the AIDS or HIV. And also something which is very specific to the Scorpionic expression, sexually transmitted diseases. And even if it's just the secrets coming out, any crimes of sexual nature, especially the really, really horrible ones, might reach the you know public eye. Yet another expression of the cor- scorpionic energy, the South Node, well, for a lot of people who are into secrets, but this is where I'm speaking about the secret arts, the occult, the shadows, a certain more unorthodox side of spirituality, they will feel this irresistible urge to get back into practice or to refine their practice. You know, the South Node can represent an excess of energy. And, you know, many people who are into the occult, who are into mysticism, who are into the scorpionic expression of spirituality have been doing this for many lifetimes for many incarnations so they ultimately have within their unconscious a lot of information that information that old methodology know-how that what they used to practice in perhaps even 
a different incarnation can just swell up and surprise them, shock them. But with every South Node activity, you need to be diligent and you need to eliminate the excess, not repeat the mistakes, not fall for the same karmic patterns, not fall for any temptation and not be blinded by power because ultimately Scorpio is one of the most powerful signs and energies out there. Also, Scorpio is the symbolism of archaeological discoveries, ancient secrets, so this can definitely add new layers of understanding of how ancient civilization lived, did what, accomplished what, also ancient knowledge, perhaps certain religious documents, religious texts, tablets, or anything that is basically hidden in the midst of time that might resurface now and it will definitely change our understanding. But of course, Scorpio is usually a very, very powerful psychological energy. So individually, whenever the South Node goes through Scorpio, this means psychological purging, the traumas, everything that happened to us, especially in childhood, this is where we will get to become aware of wounds that we never even knew we had, hurts that we never even reacted to, but were instantly repressed. So I'm not going to lie, this is going to be extremely painful psychologically in the next 18 months, yet Jupiter is in Pisces, Neptune is in Pisces, this is meant to heal us. Because we have to become aware of exactly what hurts us, of exactly what is taking place in our unconscious in order to heal it. We cannot heal something that we are ignorant of. And neither will Jupiter do that for us, even though it can. Because that beats the karmic purpose. We need to be aware. So that's why we have to expect a lot of purging in the next 18 months. But Scorpio is also regeneration, so healing and releasing and finally ripping out the trauma by its roots can take place pretty quickly. This is when that big release can immediately almost make you feel better, but of course depends on everyone's personal situation and the South Node in Scorpio of our own personal toxicity. All of us are toxic envy, jealousy, why them and not me, anything of this nature is actually scorpionic. So we will also get reminded of that. We will be put into situations where we might have this urge and this tendency, this instinctual impulse to spit our poison, to infect other people with our own toxicity. But as I say... Whatever happens is for a very important reason. For some people, this will be a reflection that they will choose not to do it. So they learned their lesson. For other people, they will do it and regret. And by that, they absolve it. They learn to cope. They learn why exactly we should not spit poison at other people or project our own filth onto others. But of course, neither keep it in ourselves. We will need to find a coping skill, a coping mechanism that works for us and that which is not bypassing. With the South Node in Scorpio, forget bypassing. Forget this positivity where everything is just positive because it is definitely not going to work. And actually, unfortunately, those people who use that a lot, this is the period when it will backfire so badly that they will stop doing that for the rest of their lives. And last but not least, the scorpionic energy is powerfully sexual. So for some people, it will be that big, big, big attraction. For other people, sexual healing, powerful regeneration through sexual means. Of course, for others, it's secrets coming out and finally being able to show who exactly it is that they are, a release, a comfort, and the North Node in Taurus, this will make their lives finally harmonious. This will make their lives happy. 
So this is the main themes that we can expect playing out with this Nodes of the Moon in the Taurus Scorpio axis. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye for now.